What's up guys, I'm just chilling at work here. My RK1 is back and it is all blacked out. So, we're gonna take my once modified Selway spray painted camo quiver and we're gonna make it black. Let her dry, flip her over, hit it twice. It's still a little wet, so it's shinier than it'll be, but it should, uh, should be flat like this bottom part it was the first part I sprayed, so it's pretty sweet. Hey guys, it is Tuesday. I got a little break from work here, and I've been getting a lot of questions about what podcast gear we use. So today on the blog, I'm just gonna explain in detail our setup. So if anybody's looking to get into podcasting, um, don't know what we run, and uh, it's a good mobile setup, and it's also a very good setup if you're gonna be stationary. The audio is great, and it's pretty convenient. So here goes. All right, so first off, we have the H6 Zoom Handy recorder SD card goes in there and all your mics plug in here has all these adjustable audio ranges awesome for mobile and stationary we run the audio technica headsets with the mics Got stuff everywhere here need an interface to be able to hear the audio. That is a Behringer Micro Amp HA400. Also need, if you're gonna be, if you're gonna, going to be uh, remoting some guests in, you need this little Liddy box that plugs into your computer and then the main cable goes from that into your Zoom. Let's see what else we have to show you here. This is another microphone. So when we're doing a remote podcast, this GXL 2600 is what we talk into so that the guests can hear us better, but the audio is not recorded through that. You also need one of these auxiliary cables and this adapter in order to go into the zoom and then into the interface. So that's just an extra piece you need in order to hear yourself when you podcast. So really, if you're gonna be doing just mobile podcasts and not having any guests on, all you need is the zoom and the headsets and the interface. For example, we went to the ATA and podcasted. I didn't even hook up the interface because we could hear ourselves in the, the vehicle. We just used the mics on the headsets to record and kept the headphones off. It's a little piece. Also in Utah, when we were in the back country, I just carried the zoom in. This little microphone goes in the top. It's quiet enough in the backcountry uh, to hear all of our voices just through this, this microphone. So that's our podcast setup. It's pretty easy, pretty cool. I think you can get everything probably for six to $800. Maybe a little more of these headsets are kind of pricey. So the Zoom and the headsets are the pricey stuff. This interface is rather cheap. Um, that other little lit box is also cheap. So that's the setup. If you guys have any questions, just uh, add a comment here to the to this vlog and we'll try to get back to you. Thanks guys. So I'm sure a lot of you wanna know the process involved with us uh, launching a podcast. So it's pretty complicated. Well, not real complicated, but uh, if Mark's here, I give him the SD card, he takes it uploads it to his computer, takes it home, edits it, and then sends it back to me. And I FTP it up to our server that we host 
our podcasts on. So a lot of com- a lot of podcasts probably don't host their own um, podcast, but we do. So we have it on our server. You have to compress it to get it to upload. So that's what we do. And then we also have another company that keeps track of all of our statistics for us. But we house our own podcast so that you know we have control of the server. Other way is if Mark is not here and he's remoting in, is I pop the SD card SD card into my computer. I send all the files to Mark. He edits the podcast, sends it back to me. I FTP it up to the server, then launch it on the website. So there's a lot of different things that are involved there in coding and changing stuff in order for it to play on the website. Um, It's a lot. It's a lot to do. But if you guys are interested, we're more than happy to help. So hope you enjoyed this vlog, guys. Hey, what's happening, guys? I got my... RK1 back, which is awesome. It's all blacked out. I hit the uh, my quiver, obviously. You saw that with the black spray paint. And I have four arrows left tuned for this bow. So I'm going to take the one that I have my small game tip on that was just a extra wrap I had laying around in four weird random colors. And I'm going to refletch this arrow for small game hunting because I still have a month left of that. First thing that's gonna happen, I'm gonna come down so you can see me a little bit, but I'm gonna take the existing fletching off. I'm just gonna take a knife. These guys have changeable blades on them. They're an outdoor edge. So it's really nice and sharp and I'm just gonna take them off and go from there. All right, I stopped being lazy and went and grabbed the folding chair so that I didn't have to sit on my knees. Uh, next up, I've got some uh, wrap here. It's just basically a sticker. And I'm just, I just roll the arrow on it. There's the wrap. Not perfect, but it should do the job. There are many jigs like these. Um, this is just the boning, boning one. I like saying boning. I think that's how you pronounce it, but it's nice because they have the measurements on there. So if you do have to offset your flesh, you can, um, but I'm just running it straight at the end because I'm running small feathers and I like them to be able to hit my nose. So I'll grow up, pick out what feathers I'm gonna throw on this guy. All right, so this jig, Basically, they just, the arrow slides in. There's a knock point in there. It sits. You can get these uh, right wing or left wing. But all that you do is clamp the feather down like that. And then run some glue across the bottom of it. Slide her on. And then it'll glue there. You leave it for however long it takes glue to dry. Pull it off and you're good to go. I just didn't add glue. So. Gonna do this one up. That's all there is to it. Ready to go. So Kevin and I took a little hike back in and I pulled my trail camera that's been running for a couple weeks here close to the house. Um, and I got this picture I have to show you. It's taken at 1234 today, which is the 28th of January. And this is what it is. What's up guys, it's in the morning before work here. Um, I waited a little late, I only have about half an hour, so I'm just gonna take a quick little walk back to the woods, state game lands. I'm looking around for any potential sheds. My RK1 is back. So, small game season's in for another month too, so that'll be fun, but that's about it. That's all I'm doing today, gonna have fun for a little bit here. 
Are you down to three arrows? I literally just crossed the state game lands border down in this bottom here. Took a shot at a squirrel. This is, I'm climbing down this hill a little far away. Um, just missed about 20 yard shot downhill. But nice size gray squirrels. So gonna keep hunting dirt again. This time, oh, it doesn't even look steep in the video. I'm standing where I shot, and I'm gonna flip this around, try to give you some perspective on where I shot from. It's all the way up at the top of this ridge, or right up here, which doesn't look very steep. But... I love it here. It's just straight up there. I slid down this section. Gray squirrels two, mark zero. It's pretty much what I guessed it would be. One of the reasons I love being in the woods this time of year, even though it's end of January, it's really nice outside. But you can do some scouting. Here's a nice little buck rub from this past year. So just getting ideas for where to where to hunt, where to access in the fall. Because soon it'll be archery season again. I can't wait. I'm already pumped to spend more time in the, these game lands. And, uh, see what I can learn. Well, I'm back at the house. I got my vest and pack off. Missed two squirrel. Found some deer beds. But no bone and no meat. Oh well. Till next time, RK1.